What's popping? I'm good. I'm good. What's what's going on? What's going on with you? No, this is not about me. This is about <laughs> you. How you feeling? I feel good, you know, out here. You know what I'm saying? Out here. With, <laughs> what, what we doing? You talk to me. Tell me all I mean, the things. I've been I've been in LA for like a week now. Mm-hmm. I've been in the studio um, rehearsing for my show tonight at the Peppermint Club. Mm-hmm. Um, working on my album, you know. Yeah, and doing like lots of stuff in between. What are some of the things that you feel like goes into rehearsing for a show? Well, I mean, first of all, getting the sound right, you know, mm-hmm. making sure everything is like arranged properly, musically speaking, mm-hmm. um, building chemistry with mm-hmm. the band. Cause like music is all about chemistry. Absolutely. And like, it's all about vibes. So like, yeah, pretty much just making sure everything is good for the show. Are you someone that's very hands-on in what you're doing? Absolutely. You are? I'm a low-key control freak. (laughs) Let me tell you, I feel like there is nothing low-key about, like, being a control freak, especially in this business, because you are the one that's out there. You're the one that's on stage, and the people are coming there to see you. So you want to make sure that it's all good. You know what I'm Uh saying? Uh-huh. Are you uh, paying attention to, like, the band? If somebody plays the wrong notes, are you upset? Do you let that get in your head? I mean, my band, we don't, they don't really play wrong notes. So, yeah. So, But if they did, I mean, if there was a wrong note, I would be upset. But, like, thankfully not. <laughs> I want to know, because I'm not an artist, like, how do you handle a situation like that, though? I don't know. I mean... Just the show goes on, I guess. <laughs> Even if there's like a, an issue, you just keep going. Mm-hmm. You know. So, what are some of the things that you've been uh, getting into while being in LA? Um, to be fair, I've really been on a tight schedule, mm-hmm. so I haven't been up to much more than recording and interviews and rehearsals and stuff. You know, <laughs> I've really been on a tight schedule. But like, I mean, after tonight, I'm gonna be more. Um, yeah, I'm going to explore the city more. Is there anything that you want to see in particular? Um, As cliche as it sounds, I want to see the Hollywood sign. <laughs> <laughs> Which sidebar is right over the other side of that mountain. Oh, for real? Liter- literally, you can drive up there oh, nice. if you uh, got some time after the interview. All roads nice. will take you up there. Nice. That's that's where we're going. If you want to go up there and, <laughs> and take your picture like this, like like you're holding the Hollywood sign. Yeah. So, okay. so did you expect Love Nuan TT to get as big as it did? I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't make the song not expecting it to be big, I guess, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just, I'm just really happy that it actually lived its full, full potential. Because, you know, there's lots of great songs that don't really live their full potential, you know. So I'm just like, I'm just happy that mine did, you know. How does that feel that... When you, I guess, know that that song did that and it's touched so many people. Like, how does that make you feel? It feels good, you know. Um, <clears throat> Love Wanting to is literally a song about my personal experience. Like, I was in a relationship and I made the song expressing how I felt to my girl at mm-hmm. the time. So, like, to see the whole world vibing to it, it's like, it's surreal. Because it was like a personal thing. Now it's a global thing, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you ever get anxiety or nervous before putting a song out like that that was so personal to you? Mm, a little bit, but not not really, not that much. Because I know it's my truth, you know? And, like, I feel like if I'm putting out something that's very, you know, in line with my truth, then, yeah, it is what it is. I don't, I don't think I be nervous like that you know because i know it's true and i know it's real i feel that um what made you decide that this is what you wanted to do um okay so it was like i I used to be in a group Mm -hmm. like back home um and we i mean we weren't mainstream or anything you know like it was a really small group in a small town you know just doing our thing um pushing our songs on the internet you know and like uh at one point we decided to do a show and we it was a self-funded show you know we got everything we got the sound 
we, you know, and we sold the tickets. Like we literally sold all the tickets and people came. Mm -hmm. And mind you, like I said, it wasn't mainstream. We didn't have radio. We didn't have anything. It was literally just the Word internet, of mouth. Okay, know, right, right. And word of mouth. You know, so when we did that show and like, you know, I saw, I saw the energy in the crowd, you know, and we, there was this song we had that was really big in our city and we performed that song like three times that night you know and that was like the night that i knew that i'm like okay if we could do this on this scale with no industry you know imagine what we could do like on a much larger scale so that was like when i decided that okay i'm gonna do this yeah i talked to a lot of artists and a lot of them say that they fall in love with performing on stage because the energy Mm -hmm. is like no other describe that energy to me someone who's never performed or been on stage how would you describe that hmm. it's like damn <laughs> i don't even know how to describe it but um let's say <clears throat> let's just say it's like it's like a bunch of people in one room mm -hmm. on the same frequency at the same time it's like we're singing a song and everyone is singing the song too at the same time, experiencing the same emotions, you know, at the same time. It's a really magical experience because like, you know, it's, it's one thing to see, like I always say this, it's one thing to see streams and all that stuff on paper, mm -hmm. you know, to see videos on the internet, you know, content, dance routines, but it's another thing to actually be in the same room with all these people and experiencing the song together at the same time you know it's like it's like in that moment you feel connected to every single person in the room and every single person in the room feels connected to you at the same time so it's like a crazy exchange of energy mm -hmm. and it's yeah it's really surreal how do how do you feel when people buy that ticket to come out to see you i feel good like i mean it's it's something i never take for granted you know because mm -hmm. like i mean it's people literally leaving their jobs and buying a ticket to come experience this vibe, you know? So it's, it's something that is special, you know, and I appreciate it. Even Maybe. to take it a bit further, people, you know, I feel like a lot of people are struggling right now. A lot of people aren't making as much money. So for, for someone to go out of their way and buy a ticket to one of your shows, mm -hmm. I feel like you have to mean so much to that person exactly. for them to come out and see you. Yeah. And that's love, you know? That's love, and I, I feel the same way about them, too. Have you ever gotten any DMs from people that are just like, man, I love this. You help me all do this. All the time. What What are some of the things that you get? I mean, I'm a, one of the most recent ones. I think a girl sent me a DM saying, um, so she's like, when I listen to Love One Tinty, I feel like I can close my eyes and be in another world. And escape my problems, you know, for like three minutes. And she's like, it makes me feel more confident. It makes me feel strong and all that stuff. And I'm like, oh, nice. Because like, <laughs> when I made the song, I wasn't really trying to do that. I was literally just, you know, chronicling my life and my experience. But it's crazy to see how those emotions I felt and I put into the song is like affecting people in so many different ways in real life you know so like that's a really good feeling it's interesting because it's all energy i feel like people can feel the energy that you've had recording the song mm -hmm. the intention that you had writing the song and mm -hmm. listening to that song is literally a transfer of energy exactly yeah maybe not the same of like being in concert being on stage but it's definitely a transfer of energy mm-hmm um, I was reading something, and you are an emo Afrobeat artist. What does that title mean for yeah, you? So, so emo Afrobeats is my subgenre of Afrobeats. Afrobeats in itself is very rhythm-based. It's very, you know, dance-based. Mm -hmm. You know, Africans, we like to have a good time. We like to dance. But then, like, for me, I feel like if I'm making Afrobeats and I'm making it the exact same way, my predecessors made it. There's literally no point in me making music. You might as well listen to the right to, to the, the original music that right. already exists. So right. um, I just want to always bring something different. And for me, I see music as art, 
as much as like it's a product that people buy it's art first you know so i like to put myself into the art i put my emotional energy inside the music so mm-hmm. when you combine that energy with afro beats you have emo afro beats yeah that's awesome mm-hmm. take me back to the first time first first song that you can remember hearing mm-hmm. and you vibe into it like um my song or no anyone just else? anyone else Hmm. Um. Damn, so long. This, the first one though. First one. Anyone that had that emotion, that connection with you, you're just like, I'm vibing to this. I like this. Um, I'll say I want it that way. Backstreet Boys. Really? Like way back in the day. Yeah. Why that song? I have no idea. Like I just knew I liked it. You know, the melody, the, the beat. The everything like I just liked it <laughs> like at that point I wasn't even old enough to like dissect music or break it down to know why I like the song I just knew I liked the song goes back to the energy of it mm-hmm. tell and me like about- what's crazy like most times songs like that when you actually do your research uh-huh. there's always an interesting story behind, behind all those types of songs absolutely mm-hmm. I feel like um, the best I guess inspiration when it comes to writing a song Nine times out of ten, a breakup. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, Love One City wasn't even from a breakup. Like, the relationship was still active at the time I wrote the song. I mean, we still broke up, but, like, <laughs> I didn't just write a song about the breakup. breakup. Just well, in actually, general. Yeah, I guess, I guess most songs people write are from breakups, I guess. I mean, for me, I write about different stages of the relationship though not just the breakup you know i basically write music about how i feel so if i'm literally let's say i'm sad let's say i broke up with someone right and in this moment i'm feeling sad and i make a song the song is going to carry the energy of that sadness if i'm still in the relationship and i'm still in love and i make a song it's going to carry that energy as well so it's like and that's what Love One Since He Was. I was literally still in the relationship and I was in love and I just wrote the song. Literally. And that energy, everyone connects with the energy. You know what Love No One TT is for me? It's that perfect... So I do a lot of late night driving to the beach songs and I'll get on the 405 and just drive and we'll blast that. Like, it is such a... And I say this on air all the time whenever we play it. It is for me one of those late night driving songs. You know, like one of those late night driving songs, and you're just mm-hmm. like vibing and driving to it. Mm-hmm. That's what it is for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I drive to the song too. Like, what's crazy? I actually enjoy my music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I actually be listening to my stuff. So, like, yeah, Love One Cincy and like all my other stuff. I just like to listen to it and zone out, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I like to not be here when i'm listening to my stuff i like to like listen to my stuff and be you know transported to some transported into my world you know right yeah because i I feel like the world be crazy sometimes absolutely i need to be in my world just a little escape (laughs) for three minutes you know what i'm saying yeah when you are listening to uh the song and you're you're you know driving and vibing to it Mm -hmm. are you dissecting it or you're just letting it be you're letting it be yeah, when I'm in the studio, I'm dissecting it, you know. But then, even when I'm in the studio, when I'm making the song, I just be vibing. Mm-hmm. When I'm done making the song, I could dissect it. But, like, yeah, for me, I, I like I try to just make music based on how I really feel, you know. Because it's, I mean, there's a bit of science to it, but it's art, you know. And, like, science and art don't really... They're not best friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So I don't like to overthink or overanalyze things. I just like to go based on how I feel, you know? What do you think's the hardest part about being in a studio and putting a song together? Um, well, the hardest part is having a vibe with the beat or the producer or, you know, basically having that moment where the music coincides with the emotions the artist is feeling. As easy or as simple as that sounds, it's one of the hardest things to achieve. You know, like if the artist and the producer, there's no chemistry 
or you know the beat is not really capturing how the artist is feeling then no magic you know nothing can happen in that moment i would assume you guys would all have to be on the same page exactly <laughs> so tell us about the new song yeah emiliana is about a long distance relationship um basically how i felt in the relationship and you know the song is full of emotions as well like especially the emotion of longing you know wanting to be with someone in a specific moment but they're like so far away you know and just wanting to be with them and missing them you know you were saying you write from i guess experiences is that something that happened with you absolutely i wrote the song during uh, the lockdown the first lockdown and how rough it was yeah it was <laughs> um tell us what you're working on next yeah, so um, my first album is coming out this year. I'm really excited about the album. Um, lots of experiences, lots of emo Afro beats, lots of exciting stuff on there. Um, I'm excited about the album, and I think you should be too, you know. And um, yeah, I've got lots of collaborations coming in between as well. I'm also on the road mm -hmm. playing a series of festivals in the US, in Europe, and Africa as well. And um, yeah, man, like there's gonna be lots of surprises too in between. If you can say one person to the people that have bought a ticket for the shows right now, what would you say to them? Thank you. And let's have a good time tonight. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.